What's good, YouTube? It's Mirror Boy Squiddy back in another video. Today, we're going to talk about how to beat the Naturia Runic deck. This is one of the most annoying decks that I've ever faced in my life. Essentially, how it works is they rely on Runic Fountain, which allows them to activate quick play Runic spell cards from their hand during your turn, and then they can draw up to three cards by shuffling back Runic cards in their graveyard after they activate a Runic quick play spell card. And then, obviously, they can search that out with Hugin, which can be special summoned off of any of their quick plays. And then they can tap into their other access a bow engine which is an nature engine so camellia obviously being able to foolish nature a sacred tree to add blessing which allows them to revive any nature from their hand or grave or even tap into the Naturia Mole Cricket, which is another beast all by itself. You contribute it to summon up to two Naturia monsters from your deck if your opponent controls the highest attack on the field, which instantly allows them to have the Naturia Sunflower Lock, which allows them in tandem with Naturia Camellia to mill two cards to negate and destroy a monster effect. And then it contribute itself again with another Naturia card you control to negate and destroy a monster effect. So... Yeah, it's pretty annoying when they have access to both engines because they are able to synchro climb as well, put up some threatening monsters like Naturia Beast, which locks out all spell cards, Naturia Barkeon, or even putting up a Baron really easily so they can start negating monster effects, uh, negating spell cards, negating traps, negating anything that might threaten the Runic Fountain. And in the process, they're able to stop you by activating a bunch of their Runic spell cards and then draw three cards again on your turn. So they always have a full grip of like six cards. It doesn't matter if they skip their next battle phase because eventually they're going to mass enough advantage that they're going to kill you. It's a control deck and it's very annoying. So without further ado, let's dive in on how we can beat that. First and foremost, one of my favorite cards in the side deck is Cosmic Cyclone. I feel like a lot of players are kind of underestimating this card. They're underrating it. I haven't seen a lot of people citing it, but I love this card. It says pay a thousand life points and target a spell or trap on the field, banish it, which you can use in quick play response to Runic Fountain. Now, the only problem is that generally the Runic players happen to have either Nature or Beast or Baron on the field, more than likely Baron, just because of the fact that you can make Baron on your fifth summon, which doesn't play into Nibiru. Whereas with Naturia Beast, I'm fairly certain that the only way they can dodge Nibiru is if they only summon out Beast and then leave the Mo Cricket in their graveyard, because typically the Hugin is their first summon, and then Mo Cricket is their second summon, they summon Camellia, that's their third, they go into um, the uh, Naturia Beast with the effect by bringing it back with the Blessing. That's just like already five summons. So if they even go into Hugins and then they go into Nature of Beasts, they're already under five summons. So they kind of have to do it without making Hugin, which means they don't have fountain access. So generally it's easier for them to just get into Baron. They can play around Nib. They can do that on the fifth summon. And usually that just protects Fountain, so it's kind of annoying. So sometimes you do need to have two cards in order to get rid of it. But I think in a nutshell, you can't really just say that cards are bad because of the fact that they're easily negated. You have to look at Cosmic Cyclone as a card on its own. So like in tandem with other non-engine cards, with other engine cards that they might be negating with Baron, you can bait it out, then use Cosmic and reduce game state to get rid of the Fountain, which I really, really love. And... Getting rid of Fountain is your number one priority because this is essentially how the deck wins, right? They're able to draw a bunch of cards. They have infinite resources. They're able to activate all of their different Runic Quick Play spell cards. And they have a bunch of Runic spell cards that are all quite good in certain scenarios. They obviously have the uh, Destruction, which allows them to pop a card, a Spell Trap card, um, so they can pop things like Field Spells. And then Flashing Fire destroys a Special Summon card. And then obviously Freezing Curses, which is like a Forbidden Chalice. And in the process, they're also banishing cards from the top of your deck, which is pretty annoying. They can deck you out. They can start uh, cutting into your engine sometimes when you have one-ups that you don't really want banished. So getting rid of Fountain is number one priority. Harpy's Feather Duster is a little worse because of the fact that Hugin has a protection effect, which allows them to banish itself in substitution of a card being destroyed by a card effect that they control. So if you activate something like Harpy's Feather Duster and they have Runic Fountain on the field, they can chain in response uh, to activate something like a Runic Tip or anything really to special summon out Hugin. And then when the chain resolves, they banish Hugin. So your Harpy's Feather Duster is effectively a dud. And then they probably have a bunch of quick plays in their grave so they can start using Fountain to draw cards. So I don't really like siding in Harpy's Feather Duster. In fact, I would not recommend it at all. And the nice thing about Cosmic is that it banishes, so it doesn't destroy. So this is really, really crucial in um, playing around the Hugin there. The other thing that I love is Kaijus. They're 
not like, obviously they're not the best. You still do need to pair them with another card, but it's very, very important for you to get rid of the Naturia Beast or the Baron. Generally in the blind game state, like blind game one, if they go first, they probably just make a Baron and pass because it's just the safest thing into all of the metagame. But if they know you're playing something spell heavy, like cast here or something, they might pivot in game two, game three, just try and stick a beast on the field. So obviously there are not a lot of easy ways to deal with this. We just really have to Kaiju over it and hope for the best. Kaijus are also very effective when they do have the Sunflower lock up. So we can just get rid of the Camellia so they can't special summon, summon a uh, name from their graveyard when you normally special summon a monster. So I quite like them. The annoying thing again is you do have to have more than one card in order to deal with this deck sometimes just because of the nature of the two engines. Now, the other thing you can do is prevent them from playing all together. Prevent them from cutting... Uh, from getting access to both engines because they really need the Naturia engine and the Runic engine in order to play. That's the only time their deck is unfair is when they have access to both engines and accumulate infinite resources. If they only have Naturias, that's fine. If they only have the Runic, that's also fine. It doesn't really matter. Even if they're drawing multiple cards, the chances are that you're still going to be able to play through a lot of their quick play spell cards just because they're not as high impact as uh, the Naturia cards are. And then the Naturia cards rely on the protection of the quick play spell cards so you can't destroy stuff by battle, you can't switch over things you can't like pop stuff they can protect stuff and then draw cards to go in tandem with it so they really rely on each other and that's why i love cards like ash blossom and joy spring to cut them off their engine i see a lot of players doing this thing where they ash the hugens effect instantly i don't really agree with that previously i was also doing that because i thought that fountain was like the main thing you want to get rid of but it turns out that actually whenever they discard the nature sacred tree i actually prefer to ash the sacred tree and allow them to add fountain because a lot of times this deck actually struggles with consistency you have to have multiple ways to get to your pieces so if they don't have access to the nature engine a lot of times they can't really play because they're just left with the hugen on the board they can't go into their stardust or the Coral Dragon, which allows them to draw a card, which allows them to accumulate resources and then go into the Baron. So a lot of times they, uh, when they do have the Hugin, which is level two, and then they have the Baron, they're able to make the Charge Warrior, which allows them to draw a card, and then they can Reborn and make Baron, or they can go into Coral Dragon and then use the effect to summon a um, level four fusion from their extra deck, the other runic, and then go into Baron. But if you cut them off from that, they're just left with the Hugin. Sure, they get Fountain, but it doesn't really matter. And in the case where they already have Naturia, like Mole Cricket or a Camellia, that's fine, but it doesn't happen every time. I would rather just almost insta win the game on the spot by ashing the tree instead of allowing them to get the Nutria engine by cutting them off fountain they already have that level two body on the board they're able to charge warrior into something else they're able to make a baron really easily and then they're able to activate another hugin because it's not once per turn and then they just get fountain anyways so for me i would rather just cut them off and activate sacred tree and nine times out of ten i would say it actually works quite often maybe nine, not nine times out of ten but it does work quite often and i just love just ashing the sacred tree it's like even if they have the mole cricket or whatever it does doesn't matter because then we could just ash the runic fountain when they try to draw three they also have to have access to up to three quick play names in order to draw three which they don't always have if they don't have tip access it's really really hard actually to be able to get three names in the graveyard sometimes they're only drawing one or drawing two and even if i wait held the ash for the tree um you know, sometimes if they don't have access to the Naturia engine, then I could still just ash the fountain and then they don't draw cards. They might not have more quick play spell cards. So I would rather just ash the tree or ash the Naturia engine every time and just wait to see what they do. Like if they normally summon Mole Cricket after they do their Hugin play to search, then I can ash that. And a lot of times that punishes them as well. And similarly, I could ash Camellia so they can't foolish either the Mole Cricket or another copy of Naturia Sacred Tree to add the blessing to special summon back and start doing their plays. So that's my spiel about Ash. I prefer doing that. The other nice hand trap is obviously Ghost Spell and Haunted Mansion. This hits a lot of things, including Runic Fountain. It's an egg one, but it doesn't matter because this is better than them drawing three cards, right? And we can use this on their turn or our turn, so it's flexible. It also hits the nature of Mo Cricket in the graveyard, which could be a little bit pesky. It hits the Naturia Camellia to revive. It hits the Naturia Blessing, which they might have set. So a lot of times they have the Naturia Beast with a Blessing set. So when you Kaju them, they just resurrect the beast anyways. But then if you have the bell, you can just bell it so they don't get it back. That's the nice thing I like about Ghost Bell. Definitely side that against this deck. Troll Lockbird is also pretty good at surface value, but it's a lot worse because good runic players will actually use their quick play spell cards in the draw phase. So they summon Hugin in the draw phase, they activate the effect of Hugin to add in the draw phase. All of this is in the draw phase, so you cannot Troll Lockbird in the draw step. 
So it's a little worse, but you still get a lot of value because at some point in their main phase, they're probably gonna have to add, whether that's off Camellia to send into your sacred tree, off their normal to add the blessing, or so on and so forth, something with tip, for example. And then that being able to cut off their subsequent runic fountain draws, I like. So it's like, it's sort of like Bow in that case, or Ash. We're cutting them off from drawing three cards that turn. Drawing Aquavirus has achieved its purpose. That's fine. It doesn't stop them in their tracks, but it works well enough that it's a good card to take in deck one four. If you're playing a deck like Cast Hero where you can play Shifter, obviously you want to play this card because you cut them off of their graveyard, which is both engines. They cannot use Nature's Sacred Tree Search. They can't use the Naturias. They can't use Blessing. They can't use Fountain either. So this card is obviously a no-brainer. It's very, very good. Nibiru is obviously not a card I would... I would probably not side this against the deck just because it's not very good. But if you happen to main deck it, you still get intrinsic value. A lot of their plays do end on five summons. Again, like Baron being on the fifth summon. Okay, they're going to negate and destroy Nib, but that's fine. We effectively traded Nib as an infinite impermanence for the Baron. We baited it out, and then on our play turn, we can play without having our stuff negated, right? And then if they go in the Beast play and they use five summons, or they get greedy and bring back Mole Cricket off the... Uh, the beast summon, then you can just nib there and that just super mega punishes them. So I still like Nibiru. I don't think it's dead, but I would definitely not side it in because it doesn't do enough. Gamma is a really, really nice card. Again, I don't like using this on Hugin similar to how Ash functions. I would rather 100% of the time wait for the Naturia card. So they search the Naturia, they go Mo Cricket effect, they go Camellia effect. That's when I want a Gamma. Cuts them off in the Naturia access. They have the Hugin on board, so they're not able to at activate the other quick play spell cards to special summon. They literally can only activate either tip or runic slumber to target the Hugin in order to get more quick play spell cards into the graveyard so they can draw. So sometimes they might just be cut off from the runic fountain draw because they're not able to special summon other Hugins when they already control monster in the extra monster zone because these runic cards have to special summon to the extra monster zone. So that's just one thing to keep note of. If you don't have access to the Nichiri engine, then they're not able to synchro summon and get rid of those names. Artifact Lancia is pretty horrendous against this deck. It's a trap. It does shut off all of the quick play runic spell cards because those are forced to banish. So if you cannot banish, you cannot activate it. But I just don't like a card that doesn't really do anything on your turn. It just really turtles on their turn. And then on their turn, on your turn, they already have like Naturio cards. They might have like negates. They might have their own hand traps. So you're essentially going negative one to skip their turn, but you're not really skipping their turn. Um, also, the runic cards don't really have to banish if they're special summoning from the extra deck. So they're still able to potentially draw. I don't like Lancia for that reason. Similar, Ghost Ogre and Snow Rabbit, which will be popular in the upcoming uh, metagame because of the cards like Waku Ushi, Super Heavy Samurai, and uh, My Friend Purely. This card is pretty bad against this deck because you're not able to use it against Fountain because he can just protects, and then anything else that you hit is sort of a neg, so I don't really like it. The only thing that it's very live against is actually Nitrio Beast because Beast has to be face up in order to negate um, on the resolution. So if you chain... Ghost Ogre to Nature of Beast, that's actually really effective. So it's not 100% dead. There's some marginal value. If you're playing a deck with a bunch of spell cards, then I might even argue siding in Ogre just to combat the Nature of Beast because it's a clean answer, one for one trade that gets rid of Nature of Beast that you can draw as your sixth card. So um, Ghost Ogre is not completely dead. I mean, I, th I think I spoke too soon when I say I don't like this card. It actually could be good in the right deck, in the side deck, just to hit the Beast. Infinite Impermanence, Valor, and Ghost Mourner are decent. You could make an argument for hitting Hugin again, like we mentioned before with uh, the Ash. I don't really like to do it. Also, if they're Hugins in the draw step, you're not able to use the Valor. But I would rather see... It depends on your hand, really, but a lot of times I do like to hold it for the Nishiro cards if I can. If you can't afford for them to draw three cards, it's a little worse than Ash. Maybe you would just imperm the Hugin, so I can definitely see an argument for that. Plus, if they're able to search the Camellia and you Valor or imperm that, it doesn't really affect them as much as they would the Ash because they're already able to get the body. And then with Camellia and Hugin, they're able to Synchro Summon either for Coral Dragon or potentially the... Um, uh, start as charge warrior to draw cards so they can keep drawing cards into their engine and you're going neg one so i don't like it as much as i would think um to just wait for the interior engine i think it depends on your hand if you can't afford if you don't have any other hand traps i might just even just imperm the hugin just so they're not drawing three and hope that they don't have access to the interiors if they didn't discard tree but again it does depend you could just wait to see what happens i still not like fully sure but if you have it with another hand trap then there might be an argument to uh, potentially wait. So 
Uh, it doesn't really matter if they get the extra draw, you're just waiting. You could even wait for the Imperm to your turn, just so you can use it on something like Nature of Beast if you're playing a spell heavy deck, or on Baron just to get the one for one trade. Um, but typically I think it's very hand dependent. I could see myself ashing a Hugin if I have like just one, or sorry, Valeria a Hugin or Imperming a Hugin if that's like the only card I have. And I just like have to pray that they don't have uh, enough extenders to keep playing. And then DD Crow's not very good. Well, actually, you know what? It is very good because you can hit Nature Mole Cricket. But the thing it's not very good against is the Runic Fountain because Runic says place them on the bottom of your deck in any order, then draw the same number of cards. So if they target three and you banish one, they still get to shovel back two and draw two. So it's not very good against that. But against Mole Cricket, which is a very annoying card for a lot of decks, it is highly effective. So I definitely would say, I know that Crow's kind of fallen out of the format, but if for whatever reason, and your deck still plays Crow if you're playing like Tri Brigade or whatever, it could still be a card that you want to keep just to hit the Mole Cricket or to hit potential names that they use um, for Blessing. But again, the Trigger Blessing doesn't target, so just remember that. So if they have multiple Camellias in Grave, then Crow doesn't really do as much as you would like. But it's not completely dead. And then last preventative measure, measures that we should talk about are Magic Deflector. This negates all continuous and it uh, plays spell cards on the field. So you're negating all the runic cards and you're negating Fountain as well, which is very, very nice. Um, so if you have a deck that can go first and swing in this card, definitely side that. Other cards are like Anti-Spell Fragrance, which forces them to chain all of the runic quick play spell cards, which they can't really do because they're only going to be able to special summon one uh, body to the board. And then the other ones, they would have to like either... If they happen to have the Runic Destruction, then you're kind of like in a bad spot because they're able to just pop it as an MST. But um, they would really literally need to have that card or Cosmic Cyclone as their only outs other than um, the Nature Engine, which allows them to summon something like a Coral Dragon or a Baron to try and pop. Um, that's why I like Deflector a little better because it just stops all of the cards and it's a blanket card. The other card is Spell Canceler. This might be a popular side deck card in Super Heavy Samurai because of the fact that you can special summon it, or rather search it off of Khalifa or Genius, and then normal summon it by tributing. When you special summon two monsters, when you Pendulum summon two monsters, I believe, to uh, Khalifa or Genius' zones, you're able to search a level five or higher machine type monster, which Spell Canceler fits a bill. So this can be very effective against the Runic cards. You just have to watch out again for some of the Nichiria cards. If they're able to um, summon out Nichiria Mo Cricket and then instantly go in the Camellia and Sunflower, they're able to make Coral Dragon quite easily just to pop your Spell Canceler. So you do need to have some protection for it. But it could be a popular side deck card, especially if they're able to go with the Sirion King Regulus to protect the Spell Canceler. So then you're kind of in a bind there. Um, so it depends on what... Uh, the players adapt to but it's another card that could be highly effective against this deck so yeah that's all i had for this deck right now if you guys have any things to suggest please let me know in the comments below if i missed anything if there are any other ways to beat this deck because it's actually one of the more annoying decks personally i hate this deck i hate playing against it i hate everything about it it's just so annoying they have a bunch of cards in hand they end on such an innocuous board with like baron plus a fountain up with like a bunch of cards in hand all of a sudden they're activating a bunch of cards they have hand traps and they draw a bunch of cards so yeah, it's annoying. But if you guys haven't, uh, like, comment, subscribe already, and let me know in the comments below what you guys think about this deck and how to beat it.